Hello rock stars. This video will instruct you on how to utilize the gateway built-in network server. Start by logging into the gateway via the web UI. The default username and password are root. The home page that you see as soon as you log in provides a summary of essential metrics on system performance. First and foremost, make sure you have set the channel plan to one corresponding to your regional frequency band. Depending on the gateway variant, the default channel plan might not be the one you need. For that go to the channel plan tab. From the region drop down menu, you select the channel plan. In case you can't find a plan that suits you, you can enter the channel frequencies manually. So, let's choose the EU region for the demo as we are in Europe and keep the LoRa 1 public option enabled. Now, apply the changes by clicking save and apply. Once the frequency region has been taken care of you can proceed to set up the LoRa network settings by going to the LoRa network tab. The network settings section is the main control point for the behavior of the gateway as far as LoRa 1 functionality is concerned. At the top, you see the gateway EUI, a unique identifier for any gateway part of a LoRa 1 network. Depending on which of the three modes of operation you choose, the settings you can configure change to a large degree. This tutorial provides information on the network server mode of operation, which is the default mode. This particular mode of operation comes with a number of settings that affect downlink frame behavior. These are going to be explored in subsequent videos, as you can leave them with the default values for now. Apply the configuration clicking save and apply. Let's move to the gateway page. This is where you add gateways to the network server to link them so all the data is aggregated in the server running on this particular gateway. It is not shown as being added, however, it is by default so you do not need to add it manually. Additionally, you can relay data via a backend and QTT bridge to a combination of a server address and port of your choosing, presumably where an MQTT broker is hosted. Move on to the application page. The application creation process is straightforward and intuitive. Start by inputting a name for your application. Next, select the application type. Type 1 if you want to have one application key for all devices in the application. Type 2 if you want to have a separate application key for every device. Let's choose type 1 for now and click the add button. The application configuration screen shows up, where you can change the name, choose whether to auto-add devices. Leave the auto-add functionality off for now. Generate an application key using the generate key icon or input one manually. Optionally you can add a description. The application allows for formatting the payload in accordance with the Cayenne LPP standard. Additionally, you have the choice to only forward the parse data. Application level integrations are also available. However, they are out of the scope of this tutorial. Click Save and Apply. As the application has now been created, we can proceed to add the actual device. Click the Edit button for the desired application and you will be transferred to the device's screen. Input a device EUI and press the Add button. Batch adding is also available, where you can add several devices incrementing on the last bit value of the input EUI. Fill in a name, and select the LoRa 1 class. A and C are available. Let's choose class A as it is the most used one. Select the join method, OTAA or ABP, and the frame counter width, 16 or 32 bit. We are leaving these with their default values. Optionally, you can enable the LPTP functionality, which is a rock proprietary formatting. The description is optional. Save and apply and that is it. Your device is now a part of the application you have created and it will be able to join the network assuming the parameters in the device and the network server match. So that's all for this video guys. For detailed information on specific use cases or additional functionality refer to our documentation center, where you can find all of it in the form of written documentation, articles, and more. See all the links down below. Comment, like, and subscribe to stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next video.